Okay, let's take a look at 123D circuits. First thing we need to do is start a new file. So I'm going to click up here on New and select a new electronics lab. Click on that and it's going to load up a breadboard that we can work with. Okay, so here's our breadboard. Now our breadboard is made, made out of a series of columns and rows. Now the columns in the middle of the breadboard are connected vertically. So one, two, three, four, five holes are all connected. Therefore, if I put a wire in here, it will be connected to a wire in here, but will not be connected over here. So this column is its own entity, its own, go all, all the way along the board. Each of these columns are connected. Now in 1, 2, 3D, you'll see when you mouse over one of the holes, it shows you all the connected ones. So those little green circles below, that's indicating that those are connected. At the top, we've got two horizontal rows, a negative row and a positive row. And again, these ones are connected horizontally as opposed to vertically down here. And when you mouse over, you get the green circles and the line indicating that they're connected together. So let's take a look at adding some components to this breadboard. I come up here and I click on components, and that brings up a browser at the bottom. Now, as I said before, we need an LED. So I'm gonna bring my LED up and place between two rows. So right now, these obviously are connected through the LED. So electricity would have to travel through here for anything to happen. I'm gonna get a resistor, and I'm gonna add the resistor to the positive side of my LED. I know it's positive because it's round on the inside. If we zoom in on it, you'll see a rounded edge for positive, flat edge for negative. They've put a little bend on the leg as well, so you can tell. If you look inside, you'd see a bigger piece of metal on this side and a small piece on this side. Okay, zoom back out. Our resistor value is a little high at one kilo ohm. So we're going to change that to ohms and 330, which is a typical resistor value for a red LED. Okay, now the next thing we need to add is our Arduino. There it is, Arduino Uno. We'll drag that up and into our drawing. And I'm just going to zoom out a bit. I'm going to close the component manager. Drag this down here. So it's nice and tidy. Now on our Arduino, we've got a series of ports. Zero and one are used to program your Arduino, so we try not to use those. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13 can all be used as digital outputs or digital inputs. Um, some of them are marked with a squiggly line. They're for analog outputs, and I'll get back to that later. We've got a ground wire that hooks up to ground in our circuit. And we've got a couple others that, for this lab, we don't need to know. So for ground, I'm going to take a wire from ground, and I'm going to bring it to ground on my board. And then I'm going to click on that wire, because traditionally, we want ground wires to be black. So I'm going to change the color to black. Now I'm going to take a wire from pin 13, and I'm going to bring it up to that resistor. Now, this is going to be a positive wire, but because it's off a pin on the Arduino, not V+, which would be at the bottom, see if I can show you that, because it's not off the V, or sorry, 5V here, we don't want to keep it red. We want to change the color to something a little easier. So let's just say orange for now. And we need to tie the ground side of the LED to ground. So a wire from here down to ground, and we'll make that black as well, just to symbolize that it's ground. So we've got a wire coming from pin 13 through a resistor, through an LED, and back to ground. This is enough to start writing a simple program. So if I come up here and I click on Code Editor, it's going to bring the lovely Arduino Blink program. Now this is an example used throughout Arduino software, and it's nice that they've included it with 123D by default. If we look at the program, we've got integer LED 13 at the top. What this is setting up is that pin 13 on the Arduino where we hooked up our wire, we're changing the name of that, oops. We're gonna change the name of pin 13 to LED so we can see in our program that it's the LED. So that's good. We've got LED as an output that's because these we're setting it up, so we're sending a signal to the LED so it'll turn on. It could be set as an input, but then we would need something like a button or a potentiometer, some sort of sensor at this point. So 
that's good. And then down here we've got our program. Now we've got the void loop. Let's see if I can scroll down a little bit. Nope. Void loop, digital write LED high. Okay, well that means we're sending a high voltage to the LED. We're gonna turn it on. Delay 1000. Well that's 1000 milliseconds, which equals one second. So the LED is on for one second. Now we've got digital write LED low. So we're turning it off because low is no voltage. Delay one millisecond, or sorry, 1000 milliseconds, one second. And then the code's over. So it would just loop. So on for one second, off, back again, on, off, on, off, on, off, and it loops. To see how this works on our Arduino, we can click upload and run, and you'll see a virtual program running up top here. It appears that my resistor wasn't quite placed properly, so I'm going to stop the simulation, move my resistor so it's in there properly, and then I'll start my sim simulation again. And you can see now the LED is flashing on and off. Now I can go in and I can modify that program. If I come in here and I change the delay time, so let's say, let's change it to 100 milliseconds, one tenth of a second. Go upload and run again, and we should see that LED flashing twice as fast. Play around with the code here and see what you can do, but that's the end of the first part of this video.